Very interesting over the past 15 or 20 years or so to watch the progression of networks. Today, virtually everybody either uses or is affected by computer networking. For some people, it's really a high-end technical thing. And maybe 10 or 15 years ago, it was only IT specialists that really understood what networking was. Now we find all kinds of networking hardware and people doing their own networking on home computers without a second thought. Since you're new to computers, though, we need to go over the very basics of networking. Now I want to remind you that this can become very complicated. And if there's anybody out there who is in IT, please don't send me nasty emails saying, wait a second, you didn't give them all the facts. This is going to be the simplified version. So yes, it may not include all of the different things that are possible. It may not include all of the terminology, but it's the general concepts that we're going for. We're going to start off with something I like to call Networking 101. And in order to do that, we're going to start with what you're comfortable with. That is a standalone computer system. Now we call this a standalone computer for all of the reasons we've been discussing. This computer has the ability to input output and process data without having any other connections to anything else. It has a central processing unit, a processor on the motherboard, and methods of getting things in and out such as keyboards, mice, printers, and monitors. It in itself is a standalone computer completely capable of doing all the things we've been talking about and it's usually the one like you go buy off the shelf. The question becomes though, what if you're not living in a bubble? What if you need to work with other people? What if, either in your home or office, there's somebody else that also works on a computer? Maybe that person has a printer. And instead of purchasing your own printer, you would like to be able to use their printer. Or maybe you would like to be able to share files without having to burn it onto a CD and physically carry it over to the other computer. That can become very cumbersome. Well, in that case, we have a very simple option. By adding a computer cable between these two computers, we can create something known as a peer-to-peer -peer network. This is the very simplest type of network that you can have. And at its simplest, it would just be connecting the computers with a single cable. Now that's not what happens very often, but it is possible. What I'd like to take a moment to mention is that there is a different type of computer. We've been talking about standalone computers. But there are other types, and these were actually more popular, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, but they still do exist, especially in manufacturing and large industry. They're called workstations or sometimes dumb terminals. These do not have the ability to work on their own. In other words, they may have a keyboard, a mouse, and a monitor, but they don't have the ability to process, or at least not to process and store much. They need to be connected to some type of database or server in order to function. I mention these just because I wanted you to know that standalone computers are not the only option we have in the world. So at this point, you have you and your friend or you and a coworker in a small office who are trying to share data between two computers using one printer and you're trying to make it simple. So you've decided that a peer-to-peer -peer network is easy. It's also very inexpensive and something that you really can do on your own. But what if you need to move up to the next level? If we remove that terminology, and bring in something called a server, that is the next level. A server could be a regular machine. Now, I know I get into a lot of trouble with IT people because they think servers are more expensive, specially formulated boxes, and they're right. But we also can use a very simple off-the-shelf computer as a simple server. The point here is that the server becomes the central point of connectivity and the central point of access. When we have the server, the server is running a special type of software. If we think back to our peer-to-peer -peer network, both of those computers are running just a regular old operating system. Technically, it's known as a client operating system. Something like Windows XP, Windows Vista, or Windows 7. The server, on the other hand, is running a server type of software, which could be Server 2003, as an example, or Server 2010. Server operating systems take on additional roles that client operating systems don't normally do. Primarily, they act as kind of the gatekeeper. They control access and permissions. And we'll talk a little bit more about this in just a couple of seconds. When we bring in the server, we kind of dissolve everything else away, and we're going to bring in some new stuff. The new stuff that we bring in is, in this case, a new printer and some new connections. The printer really isn't that important, but I wanted to remind you that you can have a network printer. 
So the printer that I'm now showing you is not connected to a particular computer. It's connected directly to the server. Likewise, each of these computers is also connected directly to the server, not to each other. One of the problems that you have with a peer-to-peer network is if the computer to which the printer is connected is turned off, then nobody else can access that printer. Also, if you had three or four computers and one of the computers in the middle was turned off, then computer one couldn't connect with computer four because it breaks the chain. These are some of the issues that you have with those simple, inexpensive peer-to-peer -peer networks. Yes, they're simple, but then again, they're simple, and that's what causes some of the problems. So here, we've redirected everything, connected them directly to a server running a server operating system, and we have purchased or upgraded our printer to a networkable printer. Now we have new capabilities and also some new terminology. When you have at least one server, and that server is controlling access and security, it's called a domain. We also have a local area network, or a LAN, because we're assuming all of these computers are in the same office, maybe in the same building, a fairly restricted geographic area. The domain might be your company, so everybody in the company is connecting to that one server. Therefore, everybody is internetworked, and you can share all of the resources not only including files and folders on different computers, but also files and folders on the server, hardware like printers and scanners, and other types of resources. This saves money because you don't have to have a printer attached to every computer, for example. And it also, of course, allows that security that we've been talking about. When you have a domain using a server, then you might also have something known as a work group. A workgroup is simply a configuration of computers that share something in common. It's kind of a subgroup within the domain. So in this case, I might have a workgroup for everybody that's in New York City. Or I might have a workgroup for people who work in HR versus those that are in sales. By creating workgroups, IT people can better manage permissions and access controls. So as a review, we can start off with a standalone computer that can function just fine on its own, which is different from a dumb terminal or a workstation that actually has to be connected to a server in order to function. When you want to be able to share resources, then you might create something simple like a peer-to-peer -peer network. With a peer-to-peer -peer network, all of the computers on that network have exactly the same control. Nobody's in charge, if you will. This usually provides either an all-or-nothing access. Either you have access to my hard drive or you don't. When we bring in at least one server, the server then becomes the gatekeeper. It's the central location that all devices connect to, and it also controls security and access. We then call our network either a LAN or a domain, and with have multiple workgroups.